Thanks, uh, Dustin, and thanks again, as I always say to you guys, for uh, coming out and the job you do covering us. Um, uh, it's great to be here in mid-December and still talking football. Um, been a while since we've been able to do that, uh, and our team is excited. Uh, we started, had our first practice with the coaches back involved uh, yesterday, so our Bowl prep has started in terms of us developing our roster, but kind of like I told our team, you know, these first five or six practices for us will be more developmental practice than they are Virginia Tech. You know, as a coaching staff, we started our Virginia Tech uh, breakdown and our game planning, but for our team, you know, what we've done is we've tried to create what we call a prescription for each player as to some fundamental things uh, that we want to see them improve on in the next six practices. And then that gives us time to, to develop our roster, get the young players that haven't played a lot for us opportunities to develop. And then we'll get into the meat and brunt of our uh, game plan for Virginia Tech after practice number six. Um, as I said last week, it's an honor to be uh, playing in the, the new era pinstripe bowl. Uh, it's a first class bowl in terms of uh, Bowl games, I've had a chance to talk. I talked to Coach D'Antonio from Michigan State who played in the game two years ago, and, and he said, Locks, it's a first-class bowl game. And, you know, one of the things I did talking to Coach Friesen out in Vegas was he kind of gave me some background that what he used to do is call people that played in the game to find out if there was anything that you needed to know going in. And so I had a great conversation with Coach D'Antonio about uh, when, when Michigan State played there two years ago, the last time there was a game. Um, having a chance to experience New York City during the holidays, I think, is a great opportunity for our players and for our program, as well as for Turk Nation. And then getting to play inside of an iconic venue like Yankee Stadium. Uh, you know, as a kid, you grow up here watching the, the Orioles and understanding what that uh, rivalry is like and to be able to play a game in such an iconic venue uh, is, a, is one of those experiences that our players uh, are looking forward to and something that I think they'll always remember. Uh, we get to take on a formal rival from the ACC and Virginia Tech, and they're a team that traditionally has had great success, has played in bowl games the last few uh, years, and, and it's a, a great opportunity for us to renew uh, some of these uh, com competitions, uh, some of the competition against former rival like Virginia Tech. I can tell you there's been a lot of energy in our building. You know, our young players are excited about what our future looks like. You know, as I talked about the closeout of our season with our banquet on uh, Sunday, this really is the start of our 22 season um, and a chance to go 1-0 in our 22 season, uh, have a winning record, send our seniors out with a winning record. Those are all the things that, that we're excited about being able to do. And I also cautioned our team. I mean, we want to, we want to have fun and let them take, on, take in this bowl experience as much as possible. But, the, t but the, the goal of it is to go up and find a way to win the game, not just be in it. And so we'll rely on our senior leadership to help pull us across that finish line to continue to do the things necessary with great balance. Whereas, you know, when we're doing bowl experience things, let's enjoy it. But when we're on the practice field, we're in the meeting rooms, that's the time we've got to put all of our focus and energy on preparing ourselves to go play a, an opponent like Virginia Tech. Um, I'm excited for all these extra practices. For me as a coach, these are, uh, are, are just much needed, especially as you continue to try to grow and develop a young team and uh, as we will be able to do the next few weeks. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Mike, you've uh, been on many staffs that have, have played in bowls from your time here at Maryland to even a few years ago when you were at Alabama. What's kind of been a common theme from guys that you've learned under as far as approaching these bowl games, getting the team in the right spot at the right time? Well, I, I think one, it starts with understanding that these, there's a lot, of t a lot of time between your last game and when you play in the bowl game. And so uh, to start on Virginia Tech per se, the first practice and int introduce them and do a scouting report. I mean, they will be burnt out by that time. And so what we've tried to do is break these practices up. And, and I told our staff, this is like back to the basics for us. We pretty much went through install one as if this was the first practice of the, the start of the season with our team yesterday and, and went and, and tried to really focus on less, how do we develop you as a player? 
not necessarily how do we prepare you for Virginia Tech. And that's what the first half of it. And I learned that from being with Coach Saban and, and even talking to Ralph as I put together this bold practice plan was that you, you need to develop your team and then have a, it's a fine line while also making sure that they're uh, being prepared to play in the game. And there's plenty of time to be able to do both. And so what we've tried to do is develop our younger players while also uh, giving our older players the necessary reps and things that they're going to need to go out and play at a high level. Um, I know we've talked a lot about the younger players. So I was going to ask about Sam O. And if you think back to this time a year ago, why was he someone you guys wanted to come back for that extra year? And how much do you think this season maybe could have changed his trajectory and future in the sport? Yeah, you know, when you when you think about Sam O and, and the trajectory he's been on, uh, first it starts with his recruiting process. You know, Sam didn't play football, I think, until his senior year of high school. He was a soccer player, uh, did not play football, and then he went to junior college and, and he bounced to two different junior colleges. So, you know, as I've found with junior college players, you know, they're a lot like freshmen when they first come in because of the type of uh, the, the type of workload that you put on them. And so I saw him improve from year one to year two. And then fortunately for us with the COVID year, it gave me a chance to sit down and say, Sam, have you made this type of jump? from being here from one season to the next, imagine what happens if you stay and take advantage of this COVID year. And he was one of the guys that we allowed back that, that did, and he took full advantage of it, which I think is why you see some of the uh, guys like Ami Finau who's contemplating, you know, possibly coming back for a, a COVID year. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, What's up, Ryan? How's it going? Good, I'm, man. What about you? I'm doing good. Doing All good. Right. Uh, my question for you is this. Uh, it's been quite some time since – uh, Maryland has had a quarterback to play every game throughout the season. Uh, what does it mean to see Talia uh, do that this year, and what progression have you seen in his game uh, throughout the course of the season? I'm going to knock on wood because we still have to get to this game. So I don't know if you did that on purpose or not. No, I didn't. But, um, no, I think it's a testament to, to Leah putting himself uh, during the offseason training, you know, creating uh, opportunities for him to stay healthy. Uh, I think our offensive line, you know, we played, I think, seven linemen consistently all year long. And for the most part, they did a really good job of keeping them protected, uh, which is needed. And so, you know, how did it help his development? I mean, as I said before, I mean, coming into this game, he was he only started four games in his career. All right. And so he was a, he's a red shirt sophomore. Uh, going into this season. And so every game he was able to play, I think you saw him keep adding to what I call the quarterback toolbox. Um, he's one of those guys that very rarely makes the same mistake twice. And so when he makes a mistake and us be and to do it in a game situation, we're able to coach it. And he took the coaching. I think the biggest thing that comes out of it is just the experience he's gained, uh, the comfort level he has with the system. You know, he and Dan, he and Coach Enos, uh, the, the as a play caller, you know, that rhythm is one thing. And so I think that you're starting to see the chemistry of it form as well as the chemistry with the receivers that he's been able to play with. Coach, I know you like talking about the standard and the work that goes into this, but can you take a moment and talk about the joy of actually reaching the goal of making a bowl game and what you think that means for the future of Maryland football? Yeah, you know, those things will happen when the season's – when we get done with this bowl game. But my joy comes from seeing the smile on those 25 seniors' face. You know, we we had some guys that have endured quite a bit during their time here, good and bad. I mean, so when I say that, it's not always uh, bad or adversity. But to, to not to, – to be able to give these guys an opportunity to extend their season, to experience New York during the holidays, to playing in an iconic Yankee Stadium – I mean, th this is why they choose to come to Maryland. This is why they choose to play coll collegiate sports is the postseason part of it. And so I'm really excited and happy that we were able to do that for the 25 upperclassmen. Um, but even more excited for me selfishly that we get, you know, 14, 15 more practices uh, where the rich get richer. You know, the teams that typically go to bowls have a better chance the next year to go because of how they're able to develop with these extra practices. And, uh, you know, you cannot put a, a price tag on how valuable these are for us. And just yesterday seeing, you know, a guy like Antoine Littleton, I mean, we may, he may end up being a 
major factor in this bowl game for us. And it's great to see that we're able to continue to develop him and other players like him. Does it add anything to be able to do it with Ralph and, and your relationship with Ralph Region to, to be here and to be successful and get to a bowl? You said does. Does it mean anything extra because you get to talk to Ralph and that you get to carry on the Maryland tradition of getting to a bowl here? I mean, my relationship with Ralph, whether we go to a bowl or not, is, is special in itself. Um, as I've said many a times, I mean, a lot of the acumen that – uh, from game planning comes from the time I spent with Ralph as an offensive coordinator. I don't think there was a better guy in terms of how to break people down and how to attack people. And a lot of that is what I use today. Um, so that relationship, whether we go to a bowl or not, he's one of the first phone calls I make after games. Uh, he's one of the first phone calls to me to say, hey, what are you guys doing here? So, no, the relationship there is uh, really strong. I'm very uh, thankful that I'm able to give him his roses for what he's been able to to help and do with my career and the impact he's had on me. So, um, but it's it's win, lose, or draw with Ralph. Uh, coach, uh, it's it's almost like it. Uh, for the most part, it's the same team, but there are a lot of changes because of things that have happened. Do you get that feeling that, uh, you know, after the Rutgers game and, if, and that time in between that it's like a new experience with the team or is it basically the same? Some guys have left, some guys have changed, uh, so some just, guys have got just injured. trying to go around. So okay. you're talking about the transfer portal stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's just call it what it is. I was a little confused, Bruce. You took me. Well, that's called college free agency. It's it, different. The whole game is different now. Yeah, it's not just you. It's but Virginia we prepared Tech. for it. We we're prepared for that. I mean, I, I've gone on the record many a times. The transfer portal is a great thing for coaches and for players. You know, if a guy's in a fit, it's an opportunity to reset and them find a place that fits for them. But it's an awesome time also for us that if we make a miss in recruiting or – there's some things that happen in recruiting that we want to reset. So I think it's a win-win situation. Um, I I've, I told this to Damon a couple a week ago. Ten percent of your roster will probably be gone at the end of every cycle now because of the transfer portal, immediate eligibility. And as a coach, we have to prepare for that. I mean, it starts with recruiting your current roster every year, every day. You know, we try to do anything we can to help our players develop, not just as football players, but as people. And the more that stuff you can do to where that gives you an advantage to keeping guys in your program that you want in your program. And then there's going to always be guys that, uh, whether it's playing time, whether it's not a fit, whether it's depth chart, those type of things, for whatever reason. And, and that's where I think it's been beneficial. Now, to me, how we prepare and the things we were going to do were going to happen with or without the guys that went in the portal. I think if you look at the portal guys that left statistically, there's only a couple of them that even played a part in helping us win six games this year. So uh, we wish all those guys well. There's, I mean, they're all were great kids in our program. They've all uh, tried to do things the way that we want them to do. We wish them well. And, you know, we're moving forward and, and these bowl practices and, and being able to reward the guys that are here that have worked their tails off to get to this point. Um, that's what it's all about. Hey, Coach. Um, I know you mentioned, you know, phasing in Virginia Tech, things like that. But when you look at uh, a guy like Raheem Blackshear and what he's been able to do for him this year, um, and for you, I know at times through conference play, you know, you, you've mentioned that you know there are teams like Minnesota, you know you, you got to be able to stop the run. So I guess having a little bit more time to prepare for a guy like that, um, do you feel like maybe it helps, helps your unit? Um, or, or I guess – how do you uh, try and contain someone like that? You know what's the best thing is I haven't even looked at Virginia Tech yet. Um, we, we've been on the road recruiting. Um, our, our GAs and stuff have broken down the film. I have not put one eye on them yet because what we've talked about is everything we're trying to do. I'm trying to finish up recruiting here uh, going into Wednesday. I know the coordinators have peeked at it. We had a good feeling that that, that may be the matchup, so we started on the breakdowns early. But – um, what I've been looking at is our self-scout stuff. I've been watching our players in our program to ensure that, you know, these practices are geared toward their development. And I got plenty of time to get, get in on Virginia Tech, so I, I couldn't even tell you about Blackshear, the running back, I guess is what he is. Um, haven't had a chance to see him yet, so.
Um, sort of following up on that a little bit, you mentioned you've been out recruiting. Do you have an opinion, I guess, on the timing of the early signing day? Would you like to see that pushed back? Maybe no, I love into it. January? I love it. Okay. For a place like us, it's great because it gives you a chance to lock in guys that want to be here. You don't have to continue to sweat it out through January when maybe some other programs that missed on guys try to come back in on your guys. So early signing periods, uh, I'm a big fan of. I'm kind of tying together the recruiting piece and the bowl game. I mean, in your conversations with high schoolers, does being 6-6 six and six playing in the postseason make a big difference when you're proving you're a program like that? And, um, I mean, do you think that's important in that regard? Yeah, I try not to even say 6-6. Six and six. I mean, because that's, that's mediocrity, and they, uh, Dustin will be pissed with that. But, you know, I'm not celebrating mediocrity. I am celebrating that we took the next step that we talked about taking as a program, and that's going to a bowl. That's the first step when you start building a program. Is That's the, the tough step that you have to take, and now the goal is to develop this team because we have this opportunity to where this becomes part of our standard, and then we build on that standard next. That is the next step. So, um, you know, I don't say, hey, we finished six and six. Like, I, I say, hey, we're bowl eligible, and, and I think – the way we recruit, we're pretty transparent. And when I sat with guys all summer long, I said, listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we're going to win the Big Ten East. Our goal will be to do that. But you will see an improved Maryland football brand and family that, that you'll be able to see the vision that I've set, I've set and I'm selling you. You'll see us working toward it. And I think we've been able to do that by going to a bowl. Mike, back to Talia, offensive continuity, the trickle-down effect of having the same guy, you know, knock on wood at quarterback, same with the same seven, you know, seven offensive linemen. How does that help the rest of – how does that help the rest of your offense develop, especially with so many injuries and a lot of new receivers in there and, and having them grow on the fly? How important has it been to just to have had one quarterback in there this way? Yeah, that continuity is something that as a play caller and when you start putting together game plans, you always gear it toward what your quarterback can do. You know, I can remember being here and rotating four quarterbacks the last couple of years in one game sometimes where you have to have a game plan for this quarterback, he does this well, a game plan for this guy that does this well. Well, we, we know what Leah's strengths are and we did a good job of uh, playing to his strengths. Um, you know, obviously our goal is to – to develop the weaknesses, and, and I saw us continue to do that with his development. And, you know, you'll see a better version of Leah probably coming out of these bowl practices into the Virginia Tech game because of the time we've been able to spend self-scouting what we haven't, what we do well and what we don't, and then putting this prescription plan together where, hey, these are the things we got to, we got to tighten down your drop, Leah. We got to speed your footwork up. We got to finish on balance on some of these throws. And to me, that's what these next six, seven practices will be all about. How about two? If you know, I know it's a way off. How much time do you get to practice at Yankee Stadium? And does Maryland get an uh, area to practice up there? Or do you just come from College Park right to the game? No, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do the brunt of our work here. We have a, our last practice in College Park will be Christmas morning. Um, then we'll load up on the buses, head up. Uh, I think we're using Fordham. That, we are using Fordham as our home site for practices. And then the only time I see us going into Yankee Stadium is when we do our Friday, which won't be a Friday. What is that, a Tuesday? A Tuesday uh, before the game. That's our Friday-type practice. We'll most likely be inside of uh, Yankee Stadium. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.